Hey everybody, in this video I want to talk to you guys a little bit about percents. Now we've all probably been exposed to percents before as we hopefully get 100% on all of our quizzes, right? So we see our percents when we get graded on things, you know, unfortunately we may not always get 100%. If we do get a lesser percent on a quiz, then what that means is what we got out of 100. Today, as we go through our percents chapter, I want you guys to really remember that 100 number, that that's what percent means. If we break down the word percent, it really means per 100, and that's going to be kind of something to think about today as we go through our lecture. Um, I know, you know, percents aren't always relating to tests and quizzes as we, you know, we're just looking at just a second ago, um, but percents can actually be, you know, used in a number of different ways. You guys probably see percents when you guys go to the store and maybe something is on sale and something is, say, 50% off or perhaps, you know, 25% off, something like that, um, or if you have coupons or something of that nature. We use percents when we're talking about um, solutions. We'll talk about that later when we start talking about dosages, that sometimes if we're dealing with, say, a, uh, let's say, a 20% solution, then we're talking about how that solution has been diluted, how that medication is diluted, that that's going to end up having 20 grams per every 100 milliliters of that liquid solution. So you're still seeing that magic, again, per 100. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the class. For now, I want to show you guys a couple things that we can do with our percents. I want to start by showing you guys how we can convert percents to decimals and decimals to percents. And that's actually super, super easy because it's just a simple movement of the decimal. And let me show you. So if I have, let's say, let's start with a decimal to a percent. If I have the decimal 0.25 and I want to see what that is, I want to know what that is as a percent. What we're technically doing when you're going from a decimal to a percent, we're technically multiplying that number by 100. Remember, it's per 100. So anytime you have a number and you want to look at it in percentage form, you're multiplying it by 100. If you were to do that in your calculator right now, you would see that 0.25 times 100 is just 25. What you do anytime you take a number and you multiply it by 100, anytime you multiply really by any exponential of 10, meaning if I were to multiply it by 10, my decimal would automatically go right here. It would move one place to the right. Multiplying it by 100 actually moves it two places to the right. So if you really don't want to have to think about it as times 100 and have to use your calculator every single time, you could just remember two places right. Oh, two place right. You know what I mean. Two places right. Uh, every single time. That will always work. If I take my decimal and I have, say, 0.7, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that and move it one, two places to the right. This empty space just simply gets filled with a zero, making this 70%. Every single time. Even if you have, let me get rid of some of this here. Even if you have a large number, if I have, say, 1.3, no matter what, I'm still moving one, two places to the right, that would make this 130%. Decimal to percent is always two places to the right because you're moving, or because you're technically multiplying it by 100. Okay, so in the opposite sense then, if I'm converting from a percent to a decimal, so if, again, if I had started with that 25% and I wanted to know what that was in decimal form, I'm going to do the exact opposite. Technically, when we're going from a percent to a decimal, we're going to divide by 100. So again, when we're dividing, we're just doing the opposite movement. In 25 as a whole number, whole numbers have that assumed decimal right there at the very end. So I'm going to take that and move it one, two places to the right. And again, we're just going back to that 0.25. So you can see how 0.25 as a decimal is the same thing as 
percent. Maybe something that's a little bit easier to relate to. Um, you know, you know, I know we don't think about fractions in this class, but if I have, you know, half of anything, you guys may know that half of anything as a decimal is 0.25, right? 0.25, I meant 0.25, I'm sorry, 0.5, you guys, I wrote, but I don't know what I was saying. Uh, 0.5, well, half of anything in terms of a percent, well, think, remember, percents are, are always out of 100, so half, written as a percent, is 50 percent. Half of anything would be 50 percent. So again, you're seeing the relationship between these numbers. This is a fraction, this is a decimal, and this is a percent. We're actually going to tie these together in the next video uh, in this week's lesson. Uh, so you guys will be able to see that again in your combined applications to see that relationship. But right now, ignoring this one over here, look at this relationship between these two. Decimal to percent, what we had done was two places to the right, and that gave us 50. If I gave you the 50% first, we would simply move it two places to the left, and that would give us that 0.5. So whichever one you start with first, you should be able to convert to the other. So again, let's just look at some practice ones. If I had 0 0.06, and I want to know what that is as a percent, if I said to take that and convert it to a percent, Again, decimal to percent would be times 100, or moving our decimal two places to the right to give us 6%. If I started with a percentage, if I started with, say, uh, let's say 3%, and I want to know what that is as a decimal, well, percent to decimal, remember, is divide by 100, so taking this whole number, moving it two places to the left, would be 0.0. .0. Three. And you guys are probably thinking, okay, well, it ended up here. I filled that empty space with, space with a zero. If you want, wrote 0 .03, that's okay. No big deal. It's the same number. But I want you guys to start getting into a habit of putting a zero in front of a decimal. It holds that place. Uh, you should always have something written there. Uh, you shouldn't start a number with a decimal. That's going to be especially important as you guys get into your nursing classes. Um, because as you guys start working with uh, dosages and things of that nature, if you got to wear a dosage calculation, for instance, the answer was 0.5. So you need to give half a milliliter to the patient. What happens is when you quickly write 0.5 milliliters, sometimes decimals are easily lost. And so imagine what would happen if we didn't see that decimal there. So in this one, not really a huge deal because this zero is indicating that whoever wrote this, you know, this number probably meant to put something in between because you really wouldn't, if you were just trying to indicate five milliliters, you really wouldn't put zero five. However, if this decimal gets lost, whoever's reading this medication order is now simply just seeing five milliliters. And that could be a huge overdose, so we really don't want to mess with that. So be careful with that. You want to make sure you're trying to get into the habit of that. Like I said, though, if on next week's test or if on a homework assignment or a quiz, you know, this, the difference between 0.5 and 0 0.5, they are the exact same number. So for math class, these are both correct, so you don't have to worry about that. But you might want to start getting into that habit of putting that leading zero there. Leads to medication errors sometimes. Okay, so that was easy. I wanted to show you guys just real quickly, and we'll touch on that in the next uh, video this week. You'll see your combined applications as we relate percents and decimals, and, and, and then we add in fractions and ratios, and I'll explain that. Um, so we'll, we'll see that again. But another thing we can take a look at with percents is we can use our proportions to calculate unknowns when we're talking about percentages. Meaning that I can find, uh, for instance, uh, let's say this. Let's say um, I know that I got, let's say, 18 questions right out of 20 on my test. I want to know what I got as a grade. I want to know what percentage I got as a grade. Now, some of you guys were probably taught to go ahead and take 18 divided by 20 and then multiply that number by 100, and that will give you a grade. That is totally correct, and you're welcome to do that. But I'm going to show you guys how we can stick with the proportion method because the proportion method will work 
whether we're looking for a percent or if we're looking for other parts of this calculation. And you'll see what I mean as I continue to move forward in this. So I'm going to continue to use a proportion method. So again, in our scenario, I have 18 questions correct out of 20. And I want to know what, is I, what I got as a grade. Well, think about how we set up proportions. I know 18 out of 20. So there's my known in this proportion, right? My unknown, remember your unknown is what we're trying to find. Sorry, the pen here is making my handwriting terrible. My unknown here is what I got out of 100, right? Because remember, percents are always out of 100. So I want to know what that is out of 100 then. So using what we know about proportions, remember we learned those last week, what we know about proportions is we can solve this by cross multiplying opposite of where our x is. So 18 times 100 is going to be 1800. And then 1800 divided by 20, that's going to give me 90. That means I got a 90% on this test. If I only missed two questions out of 20, that's a 90%. So there's actually an easier uh, method to follow that when you're looking at percents because with percents, the magic number 100 is always going to be used in, in these calculations because, again, we're dealing with our percents. We can stick with one particular formula when we have questions like this, when we're trying to solve for unknowns in these percent type questions. We can use the formula x over 100, just like we did in that question, is equal to is over of, you guys are thinking, what? Is over of is the exact same thing as part over total. So what we utilized, uh, we kind of thought about it that way in our previous question because we were looking at how we got 18 out of a total of 20. Oftentimes we use the words is and of because in these questions that type of vocabulary is going to be used. Let me show you what I mean. So that's the formula we're going to stick with. Percent over, or x over 100, sometimes people say percent over 100. So let me put this over here because it's always the percent that goes on top of 100. So we should use that. Percent over 100 is equal to is over of. So let me show you what I mean by how these questions will be asked. In that question that we just calculated, I would have said, um, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to put that. Go away. Um, I would have said 18 is what percent of 20? As that's what we're, you know, we're trying to calculate. So breaking this down and looking at the different parts for, again, I'm going to put the percent in red. I'm going to put the is in blue to show you where these would go. And of is going to be yellow. So again, the percent in this question is what we're looking for. So that's, you know, where our, where that went in our calculation. That was our X. So we used X over 100. In the, on the other side, again, what we were looking for are is over of. You can see this calculation tells you that 18 is. So there's our is. So we use that in that place. And then we have our of 20. So another way to think about that is out of a total of 20. So that's how we would calculate that. And I know I flip-flopped the two fraction sides there, but that's okay. Again, as long as you've got your known on one side and unknown on the other, you can always switch sides. If you guys remember that. So no matter what, 18 times 100 divided by 20 still gave us 90. So that's the calculation we just looked at a second ago. So let me show you where we might see some more of these. What if I asked you guys this, though? And here's what I was mentioning. For those of you guys who said, why didn't I just take 18 divided by 20 and multiply by 100? That's how I was taught. Totally cool if that's how you were taught. But sometimes we're not going to be looking for the percent like we were in that last question. Sometimes we might be looking for the is or sometimes we're looking for the of. And the great thing about this formula up here is we can use that same formula no matter which part of this proportion we're looking for. So just like what we talked about with our proportions last week, as long as you know where x is, then we know how to solve by multiplying the other side and then dividing by the last number. So if I asked you guys this, if I said what is let's say 14% of 22. 
Well, we can we can figure that out. Again, let's let's break this down. I'm going to use our colors here. As again, red is going to represent our percents. Well, there in this calculation, we were given a percent. So in our proportion formula, the percentage always goes on top of 100. So I'm going to use 14 over 100 in this proportion. The other side is my is over of. You can see this question is saying what is. There's our question being asked. So our is is going to be represented by x. And just like in our last problem, our of or our total is 22. So it's looking for, in this case, we know this is hopefully they didn't get a 14% on their test, but we can look at it as that kind of relationship that if we do know we got a 14% on our test, but there were 22 questions, I want to know how many questions I got right then. So what we can do is we can cross multiply. So let's cross multiply 14 times 22, right? Because we know where X is. Sorry, I need to switch my pen here. 14 times 22 gives us 308, and dividing that by 100 would give us 3.08. So it looks like, again, using a test scenario isn't a great example because you can't really get 3.08 questions correct, but it looks like that's what happened here in this, in this particular case. So that's, that's what, you know, 14% out of 22 would be 3.08. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Um, let's say I asked you guys, well, why won't these go away? There it goes. All right, let's say I asked you guys this this time. This time if I said, um, oh, if I said 53 is, let's say, 80% of what? Okay, let's break this down. So in this particular proportion, remember, your percent always goes over top of 100, and your is over of is on the other side. So in this case, it looks like, yes, we were given a percentage, our percentage there. I'm going to go ahead and just, oh, I'm going to circle it in red because I want to show that in red. 80 goes on top of 100, as that's the percentage that was given to us. Then we see on the other side, the question has told us 53 is, so our is in this case is 53. The question is asking us for our of. It says of what number, so our of is our x in this case. So that's what we're going to take a look at it for this proportion. When I go to solve it, I'm going to go ahead and take 100 times 53, which is 5300. Take that and divide by 80 and that gives us 66.25. And you can get decimals on these questions, on these answers. That is no big deal at all. Um, it, on the test, I might have you guys, I may say on the questions, I may say round to the tenths place or round to the hundredths place. If you do get a decimal, especially if you get those repeating decimals, I may have you guys round that a certain way. So here I may just say to give me that answer. If I did tell you to round this to the tenths place, don't forget how to round. That's really important. We would need to round that to the tenths place. And because the number next to the tenths place is large, remember we take it up to 66.3. So don't forget the importance of rounding as that may come up every once in a while. I may ask you guys on your quizzes to round. Okay. So again, that's how we find that. If, we're, if we ever get any type of percent question along those lines that says, you know, again, you know, some number is what percent of this number? Or, you know, like we just saw, some number is, and then we give the percent uh, of what? So again, no matter what, I know that where there are different ways that we were probably taught how to do these percentages, but there's different, way of, uh, different ways of calculating that every time. Uh, the proportion gives us one method to follow, and that's, I think, helpful. Um, so again, just something to think about as you goes, go through those questions. If you ever see any type of percent question, I'm going to do a couple more just to make sure we feel comfortable. If I said, what is, let's say, 70% of... Mm, let's say of 90. 
What is 70% of 90? Let's think about this for a second. So filling out our proportion formula, again, our percent always goes over top of 100. 70 was our percent that was given to us here. So that's going to be what goes over top of 100. Over on the other side will be our is and our of. So it looks like our question said what is. There's the question being asked. So our x will go in the is spot. And then, um, you know, at the very end of that question, it says of 90. So our total is 90 here. So when we go to solve this, we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. 70 times 90. 70 times 90 is 6,300. And then taking that dividing by 100 would be 63. And I almost wrote percent, but it's just 63. We weren't trying to, we weren't trying to find the percent in this question. That percent was already given to us. So the answer is just 63. So the, there's a reason why I did this one. Sometimes you can, you know, you might be given scenarios where you can solve percentages, where this, something like this, the calculation that we just did was really important. Let's imagine this. So um, let's say, I'm actually going to go to the next screen for this. Let's say that we had, we asked ourselves that exact same question. Sorry, this is going so slow. We said, what is 70% of 90? We calculated that out to be, oh, this pen is so slow. I'm so sorry. 63. I meant to circle that, not cross through it. It's 63. An item, so an item that costs $90, right? An item that costs $90. But today, it's on sale for 70% off. So here's, an, here's a situation where we may be able to utilize our knowledge of percent. So what I just showed you is going to go with this particular question. If I have the full price of an item at a store is $90 and today it is 70% off, well let's think about what we just did on that previous question. What I have to figure out that is what in order to figure out what I'm going to be paying for this item if it's 70% off I'm not taking 70 off of 90. 70 is a percent, not a dollar amount. That's what I have to figure out first, is what is 70% of 90 in terms of a dollar amount? So listen to the question I just asked myself. What is 70% of 90? That's what we just means. If an item is 70% off and that item is $90, that means it is now 63 dollars off. So that's what I get to take off of that item. So that's what we're looking at here. If I asked you guys, well, how much money do I get to take off? Then we're looking for 63. If I said, well, how much is the final cost of this item going to be? Well, since the original cost of the item was $90, let me um, change my pen here, was $90 and we're taking off 63, we're now going to end up paying $27 for this item. Super awesome deal for whatever this item is. So that's a great way to be able to utilize this for our percentages. Let me show you guys another one that you can, you know, use the same uh, method for. So let's say this. Let's say very, very similar scenario. Let's say full price of an item is, let's say, I don't know, let's say $150. But today we look and we find that it is on sale for 35% off. So not as great of a percentage as our last sale, but today it's still a sale. Usually they're super enthusiastic about their sales at stores, right? 35% off, woohoo, okay. So what we're gonna do, we can ask ourselves that same question again. That doesn't mean I'm gonna take 35 off of 150 because 35 is the percent. 150 is the dollar amount. I have to figure out first what is, and that's the question I'm asking myself, what is 35% of 150 then? Let's figure out how much I get to take off of this item so I can figure out the final sale price. So, Again, filling that out, thinking about the proportion formula. 35%, so that's what goes over top of 100. Over on the other side, X out of 150. That's our total price there. So to solve this, I'm going to take 35 times 150. 
which gives me 5,250. Dividing that by 100 gives me 52.5. That's what I've done. 35 times 150 and then divided it by 100. That gave us 52.5, which if we're thinking of that in terms of money, that's $52.50. That's what I get to take off, off of this item. So I'll ask you guys, what is the final sale price then? Not $52.50. That's our discount. Again, remember we just asked ourselves, what is 35% of $150? Because it's 35% off. We just calculated 35% to be $52.50. So therefore, it's $52.50 off. Not my, my final sale price. So we have to take our $150 minus our sale price. So that means we'll end up taking away $52.50 to get a total of $97. Oh, I can't. I'm trying to change pins here and it won't let me. $97.50 is our final sale price. So that's how we would utilize that. And I know there's a lot of you guys who are saying, okay, well, why don't I just take 150 times 0.35? Yes, guys, absolutely. That totally works. That is a faster way to do that. Um, for those of you guys who were taught that, that you could, again, our, our total, I shouldn't have deleted that, uh, our, our, our uh, full price was $150 and it was 35% off. So you know, if you don't want to have to set up the whole proportion formula, this works too. That you could take that total price of 150 and multiply it by the decimal of our percent. So 35% we know is 0.35. And you can use, oh, I don't know why that did that. Um, oh, I put my hand on it. It's, you know, so again, remember the decimal of 35% is 0.35. So 150 times... 0.35 is 52.50. So that's another way that you can calculate that. And that totally works. Again, I just typically stick with the proportion method as that, as I found to be easier uh, across the board. But again, in these types of questions where you're trying to calculate the percent of something for the purpose of like a, a discount, like we're looking at here, uh, it will be the same every time. Because no matter what, you're always trying to find the is. So anytime you're trying to find the is, you can always use that method. You can take that full price and multiply it by the decimal. Okay, so let's take another, a look at another one then. Let's say I have an item that is $60. Today it's $60, but today they're running a sale at 40% off. 40% off. So therefore... If we're, again, we're trying to find this, you know, what I would end up paying for the item. I want to know what is the, that's the question being asked here, guys. Typically, you guys are going to be asked the final price. That's what I want to know. What is the final price of this item? Well, let's figure that out. I asked myself first, what is 40% of 60? Yes, for those of you guys who want to do that shortcut method, you very well could take the 60 and multiply it by the decimal of 40% which we know to be 0.4. So I can go ahead and do that, and 60 times 0.4 is $24. So I would end up taking 60 minus 24 to get that final sale price. Because remember, that just means it's $24 off. So our full price minus the discounted price, we would end up paying $36 for this item. For those of you guys who want to stick with that proportion method, if you find that that is easier, absolutely. Asking yourself, what is 40% of 60? Again, you're trying to find the is here. So this is going to be 40 as our percent. We're trying to find the is out of oh 60. I wrote that kind of quickly. That's supposed to be a 6. I write too fast today, guys. Uh, and we'd solve it the same way that we solve any proportion. We'd take, and, and this, when you're using the proportion, you do not have to think of anything as decimals. You know, don't have to worry about converting that for, you know, any reason whatsoever. You're just sticking with the numbers that you're, you're given. Uh, you just use that proportion formula. So 40 times 60, and then dividing that by 100 was, was also, so 40 times 60 is 2,400. Divided by 100 is still going to give us 24. So again, that just means it's 24 off today. 40% is, in this case, 
means $24. So that's what we're taking off. 40% is $24 off. So that's what we get to take off. So once again, we would do the same thing. To finalize this sale, I would take 60. Going really slow today, pen. Oh, there we go. Take 60 minus 24 to figure out that we would end up paying $36. So that's how we would work with these if we're dealing with percents in terms of these types of situations where we have to calculate, you know, that first. Uh, you know, I can even get a little bit more into this. And for those of you guys who are wanting the fastest way possible, another way that you can kind of think about this, and you guys do not have to use this at all, but if something is 40% off, that means that, you know, that's what we take off of the item, but that means we're left to pay the remaining 60%. So you could then find, if you think about it, because 100% of the item is $60, right? But we're taking 40% off, which means that our job, what our, you know, duty to pay then is going to end up being 60%. 60% of that. So you could go straight to asking yourself, what is 60% of $60 then? And if you did that, 60% out of $60 would give you 36, our, our end price. So you could always go about it that way if you're trying to find just a quicker route uh, that's a way to look at it too, but you do not have to do that. That I just show that because I know that I've at times I've had people say, "Well, why can't I just do that?" Well, you can. That is the beauty of math is that sometimes there are multiple ways to get to the same answer, and one method isn't going to be better than the other as long as they get you the same answer. That is totally fine. So no big deal whatsoever. So when you're getting those discounts, you know, when you get those types of questions, that's how we will calculate those. We can actually use the exact same thing when we're talking about percent increases too. So let me do actually one more discount and I want to show you guys how you can utilize the same method for a multitude of different reasons or multitude of different scenarios. So let's do this again. Let's say we have, and I'll show you the different ways that we could calculate this problem. Uh, let's say we have an item that is, I don't know, let's just say $35. And today, the item is, let's say, 75% off. So good sale we've got going on here. 75% off. So as I mentioned, this is what we're, we're given. As I mentioned, there's kind of a multitude of ways that we could calculate this. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out what's my final sale price. So I could ask myself first, what is 75% of 35? A lot of times people want to find the discounted price because they want to know what kind of sale they're getting. So they want to calculate first what is 75% of that so I can see how much I get to take off. Um, a second ago, I told you guys, for those of you guys who are looking for the fastest way possible, you could think about the, you know, again, percentages and think that, well, if 75% is what I'm taking off of this item, then that means my responsibility is the remaining 25%. Again, because 100% of the price, think about that, 100% of the price is that full price, but I get to deduct 75%, so therefore my responsibility is 25%. So a lot of you guys who I know they're looking for a shorter way of finding that, you would go, oh, well, what is 25% of 35 then? When you can ask yourself that, and you can either use the proportion method or the decimal method. The decimal method would be to just take 35 times the decimal of that 25%, and 35 times 0.25 is $8.75, and that would be our final price. Uh, if you're using the proportion method, we would get the same thing. 25 out of 100 is equal to, um, we would use X out of the $35, and you'd still get $8.75. And that's our, our final uh, price. And again, that was just calculating the 25%. For those of you guys who like to see what our discount looks like, 
you might not think about it that way. Oh, I didn't mean to delete the whole thing. Again, it was $35, and it was 75% off. So again, those of you guys who just want to see the amount that I get to take off, this is where we use, we just stick with the 75%. So you could just ask yourself, okay, what is 75% of 35 then so that I could see what I get to take off? Remember, it's 35% off, so that's what I have to subtract from, from the full price. So 35, 35 times, oh, for those of you guys who are using the decimal method, 35 times 0.75. 35 times 0.75 gives us $26.25. So 75% off means $26.25 off. If you're using the proportion method, you would get the same thing. 75% is out of a total of 35, you still get $26.25. So that's still what we have to take off. So our next step would be to take that full price and subtract the $26.25. Again, you do not have to do both of these methods. This is just one method that you can use and you'll still get the same answer. Here's another method that you can use and you'll still get the same answer. No matter what, I'm looking for that final sale price and that's what I'm looking for right there in green, the $8.75. So there's really kind of four correct ways that you can calculate uh, to find this answer. And as long as you get that final sale price, that is what I'm looking for. So I show you those different methods because I know everybody is different when it comes to their math brain. Uh, and I want you guys to use what works best for you. Okay. Last thing I want to show you guys is how you can utilize this exact same method, even if you're working with increases with percent increases as the only difference would be that you're going to add it instead of subtract it like we would with that sale price. Uh, let me give you a scenario. Let's say that you know maybe I work for a company that sells a certain product and we've gotten to the end of the year where we have to now increase uh, the cost of our item and management is telling me that I need to increase it by a certain percent. Let me give you an example. Let's say the cost of my item is $12. It is currently $12. And management says that I need to take it up 5% because, you know, it's we're trying to make money here. That's what the bosses are saying. So let's take that price up 5%. So we have to do the same thing. We have to say, well, first, what is 5% of $12? So just like we did with our percent discounts, you could use the decimal method, which says 12 times 0 0.05, right? Which is the decimal of 5%. 12 times 0 0.05 gives us 60 cents. It gives us 0 0.6, so that's 60 cents. And for those of you guys using the proportion method, you guys would end up with the same thing too. Proportion method, guys, would be 12 out of 100 is, oh, no, sorry, that is not correct. Ignore what I have written there. <laughs> Please erase. Why is this so dang slow? I'm so sorry. Okay, uh, so 5 out of 100, because 5 is our percentage. Um, is equal to what out of 12? That 2 would produce because you would take 5 times 12, which is 60, and dividing that by 100 would give us 0.6. So no matter what, 60 cents is the amount that I need to increase that by. So that means we would take our $12 and add that 60 cents. Again, $12. Again, if we're doing that by hand, $12 and 60 cents is what that would need to go up to. So you can do the same thing with percent increases, uh, just the same way you would with percent discounts that we just did a second ago. For those of you guys who are thinking about that in terms of that quick method, like I told you guys with the percent discounts, that um, you could just think, okay, well, what's left? What's my responsibility then? In this case, this would mean that you would need to calculate because in a percent increase, you're taking 100% of the cost plus an additional 5% of the cost. So if you're trying to go straight to that, that end price, you could always take $12 and multiply it by 
uh, the decimal of 105% because that's what it is. It's 100% of the cost plus the additional 5. So as a decimal, that would be 1.05. And this is for you guys this, that are just trying to do that fast method. 1.05 times 12 will take you straight to the 12.6 or $12.60. So that's just kind of a quicker way to do that. All right, guys, so that's how we would work with uh, percentages. So I know that's kind of short and sweet, but that's all I want to focus on with our percentages. So, you know, be familiar with how to convert a percent to a decimal and a decimal to a percent. Uh, you'll see that in your combined applications lecture. So you'll see it again. Uh, be familiar with how to answer those percent-based questions that like what is 5% of 30 or 15% is what out of 20, you know, things like that. Be prepared to see those questions and use your percent over 100 is equal to is over of formula. And then take a look at, you know, be prepared to answer those scenario-based questions where you, you're given, you know, maybe the price of an item and it's on sale, so you need to deduct a certain percentage. Or if you have something that you need to increase, so we need to increase something by a certain percentage, the difference would be we would just add it to the, you know, to the, to the total. All right, guys, if you all have any questions, let me know. But that is percents.